What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Professor Anime. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, guys, we are here to discuss the weekly Berserk 2016 episode review. And in today's review, we are covering episode 10. So let's get this started. So in this week's episode of Berserk, we start off the episode with the egg-shaped like creature that we saw in the previous episode of Berserk ends up taking Luca off to some other area. And basically what we have it to is that this egg-like creature ends up giving Luca a rundown on, you know, what he perceives as the world and how it's so messed up and also giving off his backstory as well as to how he became what he is like after uh the five angels that he met he was able to become this egg shaped like creature who which is pretty much like a catalyst to the new world he has literally become the egg of the world and he sees the world as this sort of as this hellish like ugly world and he wants to change the world and this is a very pessimistic way on how to look at the world to be completely honest with you but in a sense he is very much you know telling the truth as to how exactly you know the world is like there are people who go day by day you know killing and war rages on and you know people are just so greedy gluttony and you know all these controversial topics and everything but the thing is is that you know this you know egg shaped like looking creature is only looking at the bad side of you know the world but not looking at the good side but it's kind of hard to see the good nature in in the series of Berserk because the themes of Berserk are very controversial in terms of you know how exactly you know the world can actually be perceived as this evil like you know universe I'm talking about a lot of controversial things in this review, and I've also talked about a lot of controversial subjects in the series of Berserk. I wonder if my videos might get demonetized. And now we revert to the scene into which Guts goes up against Father Moskis' disciples. And this fight scene, it was pretty hype. It was pretty hype. I, I liked the fight scene that ended up going down in this episode, but I felt it was just incredibly short. But, I mean, I guess... Technically, you know, what I saw in the manga was a relatively short fight as well. But basically, what we have is that some of the disciples end up getting a hold of Guts. We have it to where two of the disciples are grabbing Guts by the hand. We have the bird-like looking creature grabbing Guts's head with, it, you know, his uh, talons. And he's about to pierce his talons into the flesh of Guts' uh, skin and is also about to put one of his talons into the eye socket of Guts, which would in turn, you know, make Guts lose his other eye, while we have it to where the big buff looking disciple, uh, the one who uses the torturing wheel, uh, he ends up slamming Guts to the wall and this is where we see Gus is about to like break down he cannot breathe he says he can't dodge you know and everything is just moving really slow for him but then you know with Gus's quick thinking we see that he ends up unleashing the hand cannon on to the big buff you know disciple that was using uh the wheel uh previously now when he used the cannon on the the uh the big disciple now I, I was very confused on if he actually killed him within the anime because like n i saw like no blood whatsoever because if you guys remember from the manga when guts ended up using the hand cannon onto the disciple with the torturing wheel like his body just becomes like disemboweled like a huge hole is through his stomach and you know blood and guts just pouring out like i remember that scene from the manga and i was like oh shit in the anime i was just kind of like is did he get hit <laughs> you know and then directly after when he takes out the torturing wheel dude he ends up freaking just 
Grabbing his sword, he ends up coming up with enough strength in order to take on the other disciple. He freaking slams that shit onto the other disciple, and that one is dead. So now he's technically killed two of the disciples, and then it pretty much just goes from there. The third disciple he easily takes out with some bombs. We see that the like the imp looking disciple literally blows up in front of guts and then we have it to where the last disciple which is the bird like looking uh uh, guy he ends up using his uh, sort of contraption his weapon that looks like it uh, basically snares uh the head of the enemy but before that thing is able to pierce guts and actually grab a hold of him guts ends up freaking just with his sword just slices that thing in half while also because of the length of the sword that guts has the sword is able to cut the throat of the bird like looking disciple and he is killed right then and there on the spot so i mean when it comes to guts like he literally just killed four people at a time like you know in, in one single swoop you know it, everything just went really really quick in this episode um when it came to the fight sequence but i mean it was a pretty good fight now, the only other thing worth commenting on when it comes to the Skull Knight scene that we see in this episode is that he ends up grabbing a behelot, which he ends up putting into his mouth. He grabs Luca, and they end up getting out of the cave into which the um, egg-like looking creature ended up bringing Luca. And once they end up getting out of the cave, the Skull Knight basically tells Luca... You know, there is no need to thank me right yet because we are still not out of this living hell at this given moment in time. And we get to see a huge blob-like looking demon with a smiley face, you know. And yeah, from here on out is where, you know, <laughs> the, the demons are just pouring out in this episode and shit is just getting weird. We have it to where Father Mosgus ends up throwing Isidro off because uh, we saw in this episode that Isidro was literally on Father Mosgus' head enjoying the ride and the view and everything and Father Mosgus is like, hey, you're annoying, get the fuck out of here and just tosses him away, which was funny to see. And we also have it to where Casca is about to be burnt on the stake because she is considered a witch to the people and we also have it to where the convict the tower of conviction is literally you know crumbling down and the thing about the tower of conviction is that due to the events that ended up going on like everything has been connected in this you know episode of berserk regarding you know the egg-shaped look looking creature father mosgus the behelot the skull knight and usually when the skull knight appears something you know you know is definitely going on which we have seen in the past few episodes of berserk where the skull knight was basically foreshadowing to guts that the coming of griffith might actually come about and as the Tower of Conviction is crumbling down, the tower literally becomes a hand. It's something like a hand. You see, like, uh, five pillars sticking out, which kind of resembles, you know, the hand that we used to see in the Eclipse. And these five pillars represent, obviously, five fingers for five of the angels which we know one of the five angels is in fact Griffith. So we literally have it to where a second eclipse is about to take place and even imitations, so to speak, are appearing in front of Guts as we speak. We have it to where uh, there are four members that actually appear to Guts, which are Void, Conrad, Ubik, and Slon. But Griffith, the fifth member of the God Hand, has yet to appear for some strange reason. But at this given time, we have it to where four members of the God Hand, imitations at least, not the real ones at this given moment in time, are appearing in front of Guts. Not only that, but we even have it to where some of the townsfolk are becoming possessed and literally eating each other. And that one scene, that, that was a pretty sad scene where we see that little kid get eaten by the mother and the dad. That, like, 
shit. The, the kid didn't, he couldn't do anything right there. But, yes, you know, we have it to where the Talons people are becoming possessed, eating each other up. The whole camp is set aflame, but not in the literal sense. It's actually set aflame in a specific pattern, which resembles the brand that Guts has on his neck. The brand of sacrifice. So, this brand of sacrifice that is being presented is literally becoming a summoning grounds for the god hand so you know there's just a bunch of shit going down we have people eating each other becoming possessed we have it to where the townsfolk are becoming like a summoning grounds for the god hand a second eclipse is about to partake in which the imitations of the god hand members are appearing griffith has an appearance which is very interesting at this moment in given in time you know, and we have it to where Father Mosgus is still alive. He is obviously up to something, and he is still, you know, being perceived by the townsfolk as, you know, this angelic-like creature. And at the same time, we have it to where Casca is about to be, you know, burnt on the stake because she is considered a witch. So, you know, in this episode, things just went through the roof. Everything became so crazy, and, you know, I I'm really liking, you know, a berserk at this moment in time this episode i think did a very good job at presenting you know the second coming of possibly griffith and also you know just a second possible eclipse that's about to go down but when it came to the fight scene into which we saw you know guts versus the disciples i mean while it was short in the manga i guess i felt it was a little bit shorter in, you know, the anime in this episode. However, I will say that what actually went going about when it came to that scene was actually pretty entertaining to see. So I guess I really can't complain too much on that. But uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for the episode. Basically, all you really need to get out of this episode is that, that, that summarizes this episode, is pretty much that the second eclipse is pretty much about to take place <laughs> that is pretty much what you need to get out of this episode and of course you know the fight the fight was awesome let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comment section down below on what you thought about this episode of Berserk. What did you think about the fight? Did you think it was good? Bad? Did you feel it felt rushed? Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking of when it comes to, you know, the second eclipse about to take place. And, you know, where do you think Griffith is now? What exactly are your thoughts uh, going down uh, for the next episode of Berserk? What are you looking forward to, you know, most? Just let me know know your overall thoughts on what you thought about this episode and your coming thoughts on what you think is going to go down in the next episode of Berserk. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to drop a like. It always helps out the channel. And if you want to stick up to date to my future content on this channel and see more Berserk 2016 reviews from me or just any other anime and manga related content on my channel, please hit that red subscribe button below and you will never miss a video from me. That about does it for this video, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.